Hello, my Calvary dear friends. How are y'all doing today? I hope y'all are doing well. I hope y'all are healthy and I miss y'all and I can't wait to see y'all again real soon. Um, I'm coming to you again from my favorite place. I'm gonna try to come to as long as it stays open. I know parks and everything around have been closed, but I'm trying really hard not to touch anything and I'm wiping every surface down that I sit on or put my books on or um, I'm trying to practice the best I can and still be able to talk to y'all in fun places as well um, during this time of distance learning. I hope y'all are starting to get settled into a schedule and I th hope possibly things that seemed really foreign and different um, last week are starting to become not so difficult. Um, we're all learning new things. I'm excited to learn new things and to be able to teach in ways that I thought that I would never have to do. Um, but this is forcing me to step out of my comfort zone and y'all are possibly having to step out of your comfort zone too and try new things that you've never tried before. Um, and I want to commend you all on how well y'all have been doing. It's, it's really awesome to see um, those comments come in and um, those questions come in. I get so excited every time I see one. I'm like, oh, yay! And um, I feel connected to y'all in a completely different way. And so I love that. Um, I have a message for y'all today that I wanted to share with you and it's been on my heart to share it for about a week and and I'm just now getting around to it and so I'm, I apologize for that um, and it was shared with me from my pastor last week and it really touched me and um, especially during this time and I think it's important that we share it again. Um, we are coming up on a really important time in the church. It's always an important time in the church, but as you know, we've been going through Lent um, and we're going to be coming up on Holy Week next week um, and then Easter. And so hopefully after Easter, we'll be able to get together again real soon. Um, but we will see what uh, God has in store for us and what um, plans we can make then because we know that our plans don't always work out the way we hoped or the way we think um, but God's always good even when we're scared even when we are unsure he's always there and he's always with us and so I want I want to um, I want y'all to focus on that even when things get difficult even when things are hard God's always there and he's always good. So the story I want to share with you all, I'm going to have to set this down so I can read. I'm sitting here on the grass because I don't know if y'all see that statue behind me, but that's going to be part of the lesson today. Um, I love this statue. It's so beautiful. Uh, and so, but I'm going to set this down so I can read to you. I'm going to set it down over here. Hi. Okay, so I'm going to open my Bible, and I'm reading to you today from um, Matthew chapter 14, and I'm going to start at verse um, 22, and this is right after uh, Jesus got through feeding the, it says the 5,000, were, there were 5,000 men, we know by that, by history, that there were much more than that. It was probably more along the lines of 15,000 um, or 20,000 because there we know that there were women and children there as well. Um, so that just happened. And starting at verse uh, Matthew again, it's Matthew 14, verse 22. Immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side while the crowds, while he sent the crowds away. After he had sent the crowds away, he went up onto the mountain by himself to pray. And when it was evening, he was there alone. You see, Jesus always liked to go out. He always made time, even when he was busy and he was surrounded by people, he always made time to be alone 
with his father, to be alone with God. That was something that was really, really important to him. But the boat was already a long distance from the land, battered by waves, for the wind was crazy. And in the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea. When, when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, it's a ghost. And they cried out in fear. So I want you to think about that for a second. So there are the disciples in the boat and the Sea of Galilee, it was a stormy, stormy sea. There were always storms brewing up in there. And so the boat's rocking back and forth, the wind's going crazy, going wild. And then here comes Jesus. Now this was not, it's very clear, this was not a calm sea that Jesus was walking on. This was a stormy sea. And then here comes Jesus walking on this stormy sea one foot after another, big steps, just, just, it, it, I can envision it in my head and it's just an amazing, an amazing vision of what's going on. And the disciples, I mean, what would you think if you saw this man walking on the sea? And again, it's stormy, so they probably couldn't see clearly. They just saw this figure and they said, it's a ghost. They cried out in fear. But immediately, Jesus spoke to them saying, take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter said to him, Lord, if it is you, command to me to come to you on the water. And Jesus said, come. And Peter, got out of the boat and walked on the water and came toward Jesus. But seeing the wind, he became frightened and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Can you believe that? Jesus walked on water and not just Jesus, Peter walked on water as well. Through Jesus, Peter was able to do miraculous things too. Through Jesus, everybody is able to do amazing things. But what happened to Peter during that time? After he was walking on water, he got almost there and then he started looking around. He got distracted by everything else going on around him, by the waves coming up, by the wind, um, by the storm around him. He got distracted and he lost his focus and he cried out, Lord, save me. I think that happens to us all the time. We, we deep down in our hearts, we want to be with Jesus. And I, Peter, um, Peter always wanted to be with Jesus all the time. Peter loved Jesus so very much. And during that time, he got distracted. He got pulled away and he lost his focus on Jesus and he started to sink. I think sometimes when we are going through something difficult and we are going through something hard, it's easy for us to be distracted and worried by what's going on around us. But I challenge you all to think about Jesus and to keep your hearts and minds set on Jesus because nothing is too powerful Nothing is too strong that Jesus and God cannot overcome. There's this beautiful image that I see on Facebook and it's about a seed being planted. Um, sometimes you may feel like you're in a dark place 
sometimes you might feel like you're surrounded by difficulty and you're surrounded by uncertainty. But maybe, just maybe, you're in that dark place because you're being planted to grow and to change into something more beautiful than you can ever imagine. Just like the life cycle of a butterfly. The caterpillar forms a cocoon around himself and then struggles to get out of the cocoon. At while that caterpillar is in there, he's changing, he's growing, he's changing into something different, something beautiful, and something strong. Did you know that that struggle that that butterfly goes through, that caterpillar goes through in the cocoon changes him and makes them strong. And without that struggle, the butterfly would never be able to fly. So maybe you're being planted or maybe you're getting ready to fly. Keep your hearts and your minds set on Jesus in the midst of the fear and the uncertainty because he's here with us. He's never left us and he never will. Amen.